It is a privilege to be joined on the summit today by Ethan Whaley, the head women's basketball coach at Indiana Wesleyan. Coach, you are in Sioux City. That means the the year, we talked about it off the air, the year's gone well if you're in Sioux City right now. I know you just got out of practice just a moment ago. Let us know what's happened today. How's your day gone? Yeah. Hey, Joey, thanks for having me. Uh, a lot of IWU coaches have, have talked about their time with you, so I, it's an honor to be with you today. Appreciate you inviting me on. Um, Thank you. And Sioux City's the best. It's, it's I've been here seven years. We've been privileged to be here every year. Uh, and it's it's kind of you know a home away from home. The, the community does an amazing job. The people here, from the NAI people to you know Bob Rose and and Terry Rexius, who's our, our tournament sponsor, and just everybody we come into contact with just just loves the women hoop women's hoops around here. Um, and, and it's just an amazing event. It's an amazing week. Um, we're just so excited to be here, but it, it's been a special year, Joey. It really has. Uh, we, we've got a, a team that's been together, you know, three, four years. Um, and, and so in a lot of ways, it's bittersweet because it, it, I guess it's a weird way to say, it, but it's an end of an era for, for some of our players that have, that have meant so much to our program have, have, have kind of reset the standard of Indiana Wesleyan women's basketball and, um, you know, we, we're just, we're indebted to those, those seniors and, and so thankful for them and, and excited for one last joy ride with them. I completely understand that coach. It, and it is, and you, as you see the season wind down and you hope it lasts as long as it possibly can, but I, I completely understand what you're saying there. Well, you, you get to Sioux city and, and I'd love to just talk about the postseason because it's where we are right now. Obviously a fantastic year, 29 and four to this point. But you get to to Sioux City after getting to play at home, and two dominating performances. Absolutely, a hundred to sixty nine over Fisk, and then you double up on a very good Northwestern, eighty four forty two. Talk a little bit about the first two games and how you got here. Yeah, uh, you're right. Two really good teams that we played. Fisk um, is from Nash near Nashville. I think they're actually downtown Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, with, with Maya Buchanan, she's 6'3", and just a monster in the paint. Like, she was so good, um, so gifted. I mean, Joey, we were throwing three, four bodies at her, and she still put 30 on our heads. And and we felt fortunate that's all it was. Uh, but it, you know what? It was, it was great because it really challenged us to be tough. Like, that young lady was tough. Um, and, and she had her way with us in a lot of ways. But you know what? We felt like um we played just tough enough we re rebounded just well enough and then we made some shots that that uh you know kind of allowed us to pull away and then and then the following night you know the g packs one of the best leagues in the country northwestern who's the only team i believe to beat dort in the regular season um just another really good team um really well coached um and so physical my word joey it was it was a battle um and, and i you know i I give a lot of credit to our team. We were tough. I think I think we also were very fortunate that they played a really good Rio Grand team the night before, and that, that was uh, – it, it was back and forth. I think it was a three- or four-point game. And, and uh, you know, not that, not that we didn't earn that win, but I, I do think Rio wore them down a little bit for us. Um, and, and, again, we were fortunate to pull it out, fortunate to play at home in front of our fans. What an amazing community that, that we're blessed to be a part of. And – uh, so we we went out the right way in terms of our, our last home game of the year, and and uh, now we're here in Sioux City. Well, and, and great performances too. I mean, you, you talk about tough battles. That's and of course that's the postseason in the NAI tournament. I mean, back to back nights, and and then it's just going to be that again for as long as as you all continue to perform in Sioux City. Uh, Lily Frazier, Jordan Reed, all conference performances, first team. I, I mentioned them in particular, and and Frazier. Her performances over the course of, of those last two games you talked about, I mean, she's averaging 18.9 points a game. Not from that perspective what you got from her. She got six and seven points in those two nights. But her stat lines nearing triple doubles and, and just uh, amazing runs against Fisk, seven points, ten rebounds, eight assists, five steals against Northwestern, six points, seven rebounds, six assists, four steals. I mean, just all-around performances in both those games. Yeah, um, you know, that's just who she's been all year. You know, like a lot of people are like, what's the matter with Lily? I'm like, what's, what's, what do you mean what's the matter? It's like she only scored six points. Like, yeah, but 
She had like eight, nine, ten rebounds, six assists, five steals. What, what do you want her to do, man? She missed a couple free throws. Who cares? You know, we won by 40. So um, I, that's just who Lily is, right? You know, there's a lot of players that feel this pressure like, I have to score, and if my shot's not falling, oh, no, I'm going to really try to force stuff and, and just get my numbers because that's what I do. I score. And, and Lily just said, look, it's not my night, but I'm going to find ways to impact the game. And – Man, it, it led to great success, and I, I thought I thought it was great maturity um, and great humility by her in the same in the same breath because it was really empowering for her teammates to realize like, man, Lily's trusting me here to 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 make a big shot, to make a big decision, to make a big play, whatever that may be. Um, and again, I I just think that's way harder than Lily made it look. Um, it's hard to give up that control, to give up those shots, to give up the playmaking. Um, to, and to let somebody else do it. But I, I promise you, she was she was more than happy to do it. And I checked on her after the game and said, you okay, pal? It was, it was tough. She's like, coach, we won. What are you talking about? Why, why would I be upset? I'm like, forget I said anything. Forget it. <laughs> I gotta, gotta love that attitude. We're visiting with Coach Ethan Whaley from Indiana Wesleyan here on the summit. And we enjoy having you here on Midwest Sports Net. We talk about small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond. Coach, in Sioux City right now. And, and I know, again, that that has to be a thrill to be there, but it's it seemed to be par for the course for Indiana Wesleyan in, in this athletic and this academic year because it's just been a great year all the way across the board for just so many other programs. Talk about that a little bit and 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 your time being there with the university. Yeah, uh, I mean Indiana Wesleyan's a special place, man. It, it really is. I went to school there, uh, met my wife there. I was on the men's side, men's basketball. Uh, for nine years, worked for, you know, Greg Tonegal, who uh, is a legend. I think he's like the winningest coach at, in so many games. I mean, dude, dude lose like one game a year. Um, I, you know, I don't know why the, the court's not got his name on it yet, probably because he's too humble to do it. But uh, it, it's been a blessing to be a part of that. Obviously, I'm in my seventh year as the women's head coach. Um, and, and, you know, it, I'd be remiss to say – not to say like we were really good way before I got here, you know, Steve Brooks who's over at Marion. Now, I mean, that dude won two national championships here at Indiana Wesleyan. So the, the tradition was not started by me. The school wasn't made nice by me. I like brag about it all the time because I had nothing to do with any of this. I'm just really blessed to, to, to really have an amazing job and an amazing community. Our athletic director is amazing. Our former athletic directors now um, the vice president of student development, Mark DeMichael, he's amazing all the way to all the, the cabinet members, the former David Wright, and, and now Dr. John Kalaga. I mean, like, we've just been really blessed to have amazing people, and it just keeps coming and coming and coming. And what a special place, man. It, it really is. And, and with that comes great success, right? Like, great people attract great people. And, and you know, the athletic department is no no different there. Uh, whatever sport it is, like, no matter how bad a coach tries, you can't mess up your job at Indiana Wesleyan. It just – it attracts too many good people and just too many good things and too many blessings happen because of the types of people that are here. And I don't just mean in the athletic department. It's everywhere. Um, and, and so, you know, I, Joey, I think you need to ask me more specific questions because I could just go on rambles forever about how lucky we are to be in such a such a special community. Okay, well, I'll, I'll save some of those for the next time we get to visit. And, Coach, I do <laughs> hope you will come back with me and be here on the summit again. I, I appreciate getting to, to visit with you about that. I'll, I'll ask specifically then about this year as it is winding down. Is there uh, something, you know, you talked about this team and, you know, the seniors that are here, the upperclassmen, and, and um, what this year has meant. Is there anything in particular you look at and go, boy, this, this is a hallmark of this team? Man, that's a great question. Um, I, you know, I, I mentioned just a bit ago, you know, it's been a stretch of three and four years for these guys. So four years ago, the current senior class, they were freshmen on our final four team. And we, that the senior on seniors on that team to that point were just like what I had said, like they set the standard and, and they just, they represented what Indiana Wesleyan, we would say is juice Island. And we can go into that later, what juice is all about. And so those freshmen, um, 
in a way that I never thought possible have just like elevated the standard even more so. And so starting that their sophomore year, you know, we had a freshman class um, and, you know, Lily Frazier, Jay Nutley, Haley Rose, Ashley Mater, Izzy Reed, those guys who are now juniors, like those guys weren't necessarily ready to come in and compete at a high level just because they were freshmen. And then sophomores who heart didn't play a ton on, on that final four team as freshmen the year prior. So like we just had a bunch of young kids trying to figure it out and there's been growing pains. There's good days. There was bad days, but we just kept plugging and kept growing and kept grinding and nobody quit. Nobody gave up. Nobody said, I can't do this. We just kept scratching, just kept coming together. And, and then, you know, you fast forward to now and it's just like, this is just so much deeper than basketball, it's so much deeper than like a team. It's cliche to say it, but man, Joey, this, this is a family uh, that has been through stuff together, the highs, the lows, we fought, we, we've cried, you know, we've done it all. And, and it's just been such a special journey. Um, and, you know, this particular year, you know, our theme for the year was unlock and unleash. Um, and, and it was kind of rooted in, in uh, uh, 2 Timothy 1, 6. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gifts that God has given you through the laying on of my hands. And then the very next verse in seven, it says, for God did not give you a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, love, and self-discipline, right? And so coming into the year, we kind of had two camps, right? We had freshmen and sophomores who didn't much play much last year. They didn't know up from down, you know, they don't even know what their gifts are. So they, they got to figure out what they are so they can just unlock them. Right. And then we had juniors and seniors who, as I said, have kind of been plugging away at this thing for three years. They needed, they already know what their gifts are. They just need to continue to unleash those gifts. Yeah. Right. And I'm not talking about making threes like, yeah, we need to do that. But like, <laughs> Are you a prayer warrior? Are you somebody that just brings so much joy? Are you a connector and a unifier? Are you an edifier? Are you somebody that's just really good at celebrating and can make people's days better because you celebrate the little things that they're doing and that God's doing in their lives that they don't even realize? And, and so this has kind of been a journey over starting this June of what are my gifts and how can I use them to point others toward Christ in a powerful way? And, and so this, this journey has been really special. Like I said, it's, yeah, we're a basketball team and heck yeah, Joey, we want to stink and win, but absolutely, it's, it's so much deeper than that. And that's what, that's what kind of fuels us. That's what makes this such a special environment, such a special group. Well, I, I appreciate that. That, that means a lot to me. That's, that's really what, uh, that's the kind of thing that, that makes everything that you do special. And everything the team does special. So I like to hear that. I like that passage of scripture too. That that is one of my favorites. And and I on a regular basis, you'll you'll get verse seven out of my mouth. And just yeah. it, with everything I deal with, big small doesn't matter. God hasn't given me a spirit of fear. He's yeah. given me a, a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. And I'm going to act on that and operate that. Well, I I was going to ask you uh, to. Tell me a little bit about the matchup. I'm going to push that one question later because I do have to know what is Juice Island. Yeah. So, uh, so when I got the job, uh, we just said, "Look, like Juice is who we are, right?" If you if you really interact with me at all, you probably sense like this guy's got a pretty severe case of ADHD. He drinks way too much caffeine, a lot of energy, right? Like that. That's my goal. I one time I told you about the legend Greg Tonegal. There was one day, I think it was my second year as his GA, he told me I looked tired. And Joey, I took that as if he cussed me out, right? Like I, I was so offended that he thought I looked tired. And I, I said to that day for, I will never look tired. No one will ever say I look tired again. And beca because here's what I would say. If you look tired, that's code for, I don't want to be around you. You no. can't make my day better. You can't make others better because you're too tired. Right. And, and so what, what we define juice as, right, again, for me, it, what we define is using your gifts to make the people around you better. For me, it's just like, how can I bring life and zeal and enthusiasm to every moment? But for some people, pretty much all of my players, they're usually the smartest person in the room. So, sure, maybe maybe they're not hopped up on caffeine, but they can provide great wisdom. Right. right? They can they can provide be a voice of reason in every room in a way that brings people and moves people forward. Right. Um, and so, so as we kind of unpack this, we, we develop some core values. So, and it spells out juice. It's joy, unity, inspire others, celebrate and edify. 
right? And again, if, if you think, if you break down each of those words, like there's nobody that's joyful, that's like, man, they're making my day worse because they've got joy, <laughs> right? There's nobody that, that would you would say is a unifier and brings people together. And it's like, they make people's days worse. No, they bring people together and move people forward. Inspire, right? Like you don't inspire somebody by looking tired. You inspire somebody by attacking the day with like unmatched enthusiasm, right? We have players that I would just say are the most relentless workers I've ever seen. And what does that do? That just makes the ones that aren't working as hard want to get their butts in gear, right? Uh, last year, we studied what celebrating looked like in the Bible, right? Why Why are there these festivals and, and feasts in the Old Testament? Why? Because they wanted to stop from their busyness, even back then, to celebrate what God has done in their lives, right? Well, what society is busier than the current society, than our 20-year-olds that are on their phones all day and all this stuff, right? Like how easy is it for all of us to forget to just stop and celebrate the smallest, most minute things in our day and realize like, man, what a blessing that is from, from Christ, right? And even, even it's like, what a blessing it is that so-and-so took time to talk to me today, right? And then obviously edify, that's, man, that means to build up right? Like we want to be people that build one another up. Um, and, and another saying we have, and I got to give credit to, to Pastor Steve Deneff. He's an amazing pastor at College Church in Marion, uh, Marion, Indiana, right off campus. Uh, it, is, he gave a sermon one time and he just said, we as a church should, should seek to be an island of life in a sea of death and competition. And I just like, as a coach, when I heard that, I'm like, Yes, that is what our team should be, an island of life in a sea of death and competition. Society today tells you make the most money, score the most points, win the most games. And sure, are all those things, you know, is that a bad thing? No, it's not bad to want to make money. It's not a bad thing to want to win, to score. But what's the reason that you want to do those things, right? And if you don't do those things, is that the definition of being a failure or a winner? Or is there something so much deeper than that? And, and I, you know, as a believer, I believe that um, my calling isn't isn't um, or, or I guess the outcome of a game doesn't dictate uh, whether I failed or succeeded. It, 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 my identity is not rooted in my wins and my paycheck uh, and my accolades. It's, it's so much deeper than that. And, and because of that, I experience so much freedom in my job on a day in a day out basis um, because I'm not tied to wins. And again, make no mistake. We lose, I'm probably not sleeping that night, right? But it's still not it's still not where my identity lies. Um, and, and so when that's what we focus on every single day, when that's what we recruit to, we have we are blessed to have 18 players, four coaches, uh, four managers, a sports information department, an athletic director. Everybody embodies that. Again, it's like, who wouldn't want to come to work? I can't believe they pay me to do this. What what a blessing. My goodness. I don't know. Listen, I, I'm going to go back, I, and I'm not kidding. I, I enjoy going back, listening to these uh, these interviews again and getting to visit with coaches. This is definitely at the top of my list to do throughout the rest of my spring break here is to uh, to go back and hear this one again. I need to hear this one again. So I'll, I'll, I'll re-watch my own video as we go on just to let you know. Coach, I, I'm very grateful for your time. I know that, that you're there in Sioux City and you've got a purpose, and the next thing down the line for you is Dakota State. Thursday night in uh, the Tyson Event Center, as you all are going to be taking on Dakota State, the number nine team in the country. It is the Super 16, round of 16, however you want to say it. It's the next step. I think, I think the official name is the quarterfinals, if I recall. All right. I've been told I can't say Sweet 16. It's trademark. Well, I, I saw Super 16 uh, recently. so Maybe I, that's I, it. I, you would know better than me. I promise you that. I just know it's not Sweet 16. It, it is oh, really I 16. I know that one for sure. There are 16 teams left, and it is 6 o'clock Central Daylight Time. We've changed. Uh, today's the first day of spring. So how did you use your spring? Tell us as you are uh, just a little bit about the matchup without giving away state secrets. Yeah, I, I think uh, – there are no secrets in this game. Coach David Moe, uh, we actually played last year. They knocked us out of the tournament. Uh, we stayed in the same hotel a couple of years ago. Both teams know each other well. Both teams have prayed together. Uh, I got a lot of respect for Coach Moe. He does an awesome job. 
Um, and, and much, much like me, he's a dad and a husband first and, and loves that very much. And then he just gets to coach basketball in his free time. And, and so he, he's an amazing man, uh, fun to compete against. Uh, and again, has a really good team. Um, but, but Dakota state, um, it's funny. We're, we're pretty similar in terms of, if you look at our box scores, if you look at kind of our split stats and wins and losses, both teams like to press and run and jump a little bit and, and kind of pressure the pressure the basketball defensively. And then offensively, we want to get out and play fast. Like, you know, nobody loves watching Kate Clark because she walks it up the whole time, play slow, right? Like everybody loves watching Kate Clark because she plays like Steph Curry. She comes down, let's let's find the first three, let's chuck that thing, right? And, and you know, we're kind of cut from the same cloth in that regard. Let, let's play fast. Let's get lots of possessions. Let, that's, that's what's fun. That's what makes basketball fun is just getting out and playing. So I think both teams want to do the same thing. It's just going to be a matter of who does it better, right? And, again, I, I have a lot of respect for those guys. I think he does a great job. I think his players are fearless, um, and, and I love their mentality. I mean, they're, you know, and I say this is a compliment. They're mean, man. They are fierce competitors. We would call them mean mamas. Um, and, and it's, it's going to be a heck of a battle on Thursday at 6 o'clock. We can't wait. All right. I'm looking forward to seeing how that plays out, too. And someday, you mentioned it from the outset, uh, Sioux City is a great place. I've heard a lot about it. I was talking with my wife just this past week that uh, we're not going to be – we're going to be empty nesters sometime soon. And that is that is one of the things on the list is to go up there and, and be a part of a, a women's basketball tournament, a volleyball tournament as well, just to get to see the, the place as a whole. But you're up there right now. So, Coach, I wish you the best. Coach Ethan Whaley from Indiana Wesleyan. I mean it. Thank you so much for taking time with us today here on the summit and sharing about all that you shared about and success to you all for the remainder of this season. How, however long it lasts coach. Thank you. Hey, I, I appreciate you having me on. It's, it's an honor. Like I said, many coaches from my woo have spoken highly of you. I think, I think we need to get you out to Sioux city. We, we probably ought to get you over to Indiana Wesleyan as well. I'd, I'd love to uh, show you around, show you a little bit about a little bit more about juice Island that we live on. Um, and you can kind of experience for yourself why it was such a great place. But uh, thank you. It was an honor to be with you. Uh, I hope we can do this again. Oh, absolutely. Ask David Kalk. He can tell you I that uh, being at Indiana Wesleyan, it, that's, that may be even higher on the list than Sioux City. So well, let's get, it done. Let's get the, it done. Thank you, Coach. All right. Take care.